I didn't expect you to be on time. Well, I never keep a lady waiting. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks from the top 10 actors that were in every 2000s teen movie, then disappeared. You know what? If you can't join them, beat them. Let's go home and play. <laughs> Who's a rock star? Who's a rock star? I am. For this list, we'll be looking at actors who were popular teen movie stars back in the 2000s, but have seen their star status fall in the ensuing decade. Were you leaving comments back in the 2000s? Well, don't disappear. Leave us one below. Number 10. Tom Welling Back in the 2000s, Welling starred in both Cheaper by the Dozen movies, and if you didn't know him from those, then you probably knew him as Superman. Tom played Clark Kent on Smallville for the show's entire 10 season run. I could have sworn I hit you. If you did, I'd be. I'd be dead. However, when his superhero run came to an end, so too did his time in the spotlight. Since the show ended in 2011, he has continued to work, and he did have a recurring role in the third season of Lucifer. There was an investigation last year. We interviewed, what was it, 92 of your sexual partners? I think I'll refrain from physical contact if you don't mind. That said, fans might be most excited to know that they are working on a potential Smallville sequel animated series. Because you are my greatest weakness. And I'm afraid that I will be yours. You're not my weakness. You're my strength. Number nine, Shannon Elizabeth. In a movie where a guy has uh, an intimate moment with a hot apple pie, it would take something amazing to be more memorable. Well, that amazing something was Shannon Elizabeth and the webcam scene in the first American Pie movie. You have seen me. Now it's my turn to see you. Strip. Yes, that was 1999, but it launched her into teen movie stardom from the beginning of the 21st century. From the American Pie sequels to Scary Movie and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. So what can a smooth pimp daddy like myself do to help the animals? Oh, you really don't want to help us. Elizabeth is still acting, but has lived in Cape Town, South Africa since 2016 and also runs a non-profit animal rescue organization called Animal Avengers. Yana has to do a TB test and DNA testing and they're going to put a microchip in the horns. And the microchip is a precaution, just in case anything were to happen or you need to track the movement of the animal. Number 8. Eric Von Detten in the 90s, Von Detten was a child star. He was only 10 years old when he was cast on Days of Our Lives, and he was 13 when he voiced Sid Phillips in Toy Story. I can see you're with a straw. Well, we have ways of making you talk. He continued to do voice work through the late 90s and 2000s. These include the small screen DCOM classic Brink and the feature film The Princess Diaries. Actually, you know what? It's kind of cozy in here and there's no one I'd rather be here with than you Mia. In 2010, he again voiced Sid in a Toy Story 3 cameo, marking the last Hollywood role on his resume for a long while. As of the end of the 2010s, he was a sales manager at a commodities brokerage firm, but he did recently work on a new show called The Toner Par 5, which is currently in post-production. Number 7. Frankie Muniz In the early 2000s, Muniz's role as the titular Malcolm in Fox's Malcolm in the Middle launched him to stardom and made him one of Hollywood's most bankable teens. You're a pretty smooth talker. What else are you good at? A lot of things. The decade kept Muniz very busy with roles in numerous films, including the two Cody Banks movies. Big Fat Liar, an extreme movie. I think I'm ready to take things to the next level. What do you mean? I thought we just did. Outside of acting, Frankie raced cars and spent a couple of years as a drummer in a band. He also bought a speciality shop in Scottsdale, Arizona, called Outrageous Olive Oils and Vinegars, which he ran with his wife for a few years before the pandemic. 
And we can't forget that in 2017, he finished third on season 25 of Dancing with the Stars. Number six, Sean William Scott. The actor who brought Stifler to life was paid only $8,000 for his role in the first American Pie film. But that role launched him to stardom. Relax, take it slow, and let the good times roll. For the rest of the 2000s, it seemed like he was in every teen movie, from multiple American Pie sequels to Final Destination, Dude, Where's My Car, and Road Trip. All right, so we're driving. You coming? <laughs> what else am I gonna do, stay here and learn? While we didn't see as much of Sean in the 2010s, he starred in the two goon movies, the horror thriller Bloodline, and we have heard him quite a bit as the voice of Crash the Possum in a few of the Ice Age movies. I can fly! I believe I can fly! <gasps> in addition, he had a regular role on the Lethal Weapon reboot TV series before its cancellation in 2019. Number five, Josh Hartnett. With his roles in Pearl Harbor and Black Hawk Down, Hartnett made a name for himself in big-budget war movies in the 2000s. If you asked me again, I'd say no. I'd say there's no way in hell. In 2002, he was one of People magazine's 50 most beautiful people. His good looks certainly didn't hurt when it came to the teen comedies and rom-coms, as fans of Blow Dry and 40 Days and 40 Nights will attest. Where do you find guys like that? I don't. I don't. They've just... They always find me. He was even offered the role of Batman in the Christopher Nolan film, but he turned it down, a move he regrets. For the last decade, Hartnett has continued to do good work, starring in Penny Dreadful, among other things, but he's had a much lower profile in Hollywood. Well, you gotta leave him one and more, as we say in show business. Number four, Rachel Lee Cook. She became a teen movie trope in the 90s when she took off her glasses and let down her hair in She's All That. And she carried that teen movie momentum into the next decade. In the 2000s, we saw Cook in Blonde Ambition, Nancy Drew, and the underappreciated Josie and the Pussycats. I'm hearing someone glomming onto my talent and my credit. As she's gotten older, she's left the teen movies behind her, and in the last few years has starred in a number of Hallmark Channel made for TV romantic movies. But in August of 2021, you'll be able to see her in the Netflix film He's All That, a gender swap remake of her classic 90s flick. She plays the mother of the popular girl challenged with turning the unpopular boy into a prom king. Was this some kind of new dork outreach program? I'm just not. No, it are you always like this? No. Yes. Number three, Lindsay Lohan. Lohan was a child star who saw much of her success happen before she was even 20 years old. Born in 1986, Lindsay was signed to the Ford Modeling Agency at three years old, starred in The Parent Trap at 12, and was 18 when she reached the height of her stardom with Mean Girls in 2004. We have tickets for this thing. What? what? Was I the new Queen Bee? The first half of the 2000s also saw her in Freaky Friday, Herbie Fully Loaded, and Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. She even released gold and platinum albums and hosted SNL four times. However, the constant tabloid scrutiny, her stints in rehab, and multiple arrests all led her to lack of work in the 2010s. In 2019, she was a panelist on the Australian version of The Masked Singer. I am bringing fun, international, young pop star voice to the panel. Number two, Andrew Keegan. Keegan began his teen screen journey in the 90s on TV shows like Party of Five and in the teen movie reimagining of Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew, 10 Things I Hate About You. I think I like the white shirt better. Yeah, it's, it's more... Pensive? Damn, I was going for thoughtful. In the 2000s, it continued with two more teen takes on the Bard's work, A Midsummer Night's Rave and Oh. What about Owen? 
What about him? It's a freaking loser. The ghetto just popped out of him, bro. You don't have to go there, man. He has continued to work in the 2010s, but none of the films made much of an impact on people. What probably impacted people the most was Full Circle, a community spiritual center Andrew founded in 2014. Some saw it as the new religion, whilst others called it a cult. Whatever it was, it shut down in 2017. I assume everyone has found time to complete their poem, except for Mr. Donna, who has an excuse. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Amanda Bynes Amanda became a child star in the late 90s on Nickelodeon and used that stardom to launch a very successful movie career that lasted throughout the next decade, starting with 2002's Big Fat Liar and ending with Easy A. Awesome, 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 awesome. In between, she also took top billing in the teen movie hits like She's the Man and What a Girl Wants. My evil stepsister. You've seen Cinderella, right? Let me clue you in. I win. However, if you were wondering what movies or TV shows she's been in since 2010, the simple answer is none. Legal troubles and substance abuse led the 2000s teen star to take a hiatus from the business in 2010, and although she has stated her interest in returning to TV, she has yet to do so. I have to be on my best behavior. You better be. There's even more reporters here than usual. I know, they're just waiting to see what crazy thing I'll do next. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.